Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, mysterious voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out-of-the-ordinary literature that I have found in my travels. Today, it is Poetry Thursday, so I wanted to talk about a poem that has been circling my mind for a little bit. Uh, One from a classic author that I've talked about many times before. Uh, And today's poem is all about a lost love. I am referring to Annabelle Lee by Edgar Allan Poe. For those who don't know, and I have a feeling, again, a lot of people might know who this person is, at least in Western society. Uh, Edgar Allan Poe is an American author. Uh, I talked about him on this channel before, so I don't need to go into a lot of detail. Um, I just note that I've, I've talked about a lot of his short stories, including The Cat and The Telltale Heart and uh, The Pit and the Pendulum. Really good short stories, and I think I've talked about one of his or his only novel on here before with Lucas over at the Bits of Lit. And um, I've talked, I think I talked about at least one poem before. Um, and although he is, he has written quite a few poems, he's not as well known uh, for those poems as, say, his short stories. But both his poem and short stories have, have similar themes of loss, of grief, of women in particular, um, of mystical, uh, sort of uh, supernatural or biblical elements, um, which you'll see in the poem that I'm going to be talking about today. Uh, very interesting author, uh, and certainly one of the more gloomiest that I've talking about that I've talked about. Uh, so, without further ado, let's talk about Annabelle Lee. I will read it, do a little bit of analysis, and we will move on from there. Annabelle Lee. It was many and many a year ago in a kingdom by the sea that a maiden there lived whom you may know by the name of Annabel Lee. And this maiden she lived with no other thought than to love and be loved by me. I was a child and she was a child in this kingdom by the sea, but we loved with a love that was more than love, I and my Annabel Lee. With a love that the winged seraphs of heaven coveted her and me, And this was the reason that long ago in this kingdom by the sea, a wind blew out of a cloud chilling my beautiful Annabel Lee, so that her highborn's kinsman came and bore her away from me to shut her up in a sepulchre in this kingdom by the sea. The angels, not half so happy in heaven, went envying her and me. Yes, that was the reason, as all men know in this kingdom by the sea, that the wind came out of the cloud by night, chilling and killing my Annabel Lee. But our love it was stronger by far than the love of those who were older than we, of many far wiser than we, and neither the angels in heaven above nor the demons down under the sea can ever dissever my soul from the soul of the beautiful Annabel Lee. For the moon never beams without bringing me dreams of the beautiful Annabel Lee. And the stars never rise, but I feel the bright eyes of the beautiful Annabel Lee. And so all the night tide I lie down by the side of my darling, my darling, my life and my bride, and her sepulchre there by the sea, and her tomb by the sounding sea. And so that was Annabelle Lee by Edgar Allan Poe. In terms of analysis, uh, there is a fair bit worth talking about in this in this poem. First, let's talk about the Gothic atmosphere, uh, where there is quite a bit of death going on. Uh, the character of Annabelle Lee, the narrator's um, girlfriend or something like that. Um, it's a bit unclear what she was to him, uh, but he clearly loved her. It just you know, what was she to him? But, um, like, it's clear that she died, uh, and there's this, um, the, uh, the fact that the angels are to blame for this, the seraphs of heaven, and then you have, uh, like, the, um, her tomb, where the narrator is lying down, he's essentially, like, sleeping by her tomb on a nightly basis, or maybe, or maybe like they they killed themselves and they're they've been placed by the the by Annabelle Lee's tomb. Um, again, a little bit unclear, but I think we can discern from the from the story that they're lying there by the tomb, which is very gothic and and 
macabre in many ways. Uh, and that's that's what Poe is known for. He's very well known for getting at that dark and spooky atmosphere. Like he says, of my darling, my darling, my life and my bride, and her sepulcher there by the sea, and her tomb by the sounding sea. And so what we can see by that is like there's a tomb by the sea, the narrator is lying down by the side of it. Um, and another thing we can discern is that the term sepulcher is very hard to say. <laughs> I don't know how people say it, but uh, it's a word that Edgar Allan Poe chooses to use here uh, multiple times. And then another interesting thing about this poem is uh, the supernatural elements, of course, talking about angels and how they came for Annabelle Lee. Uh, but not only saying that the angels came, but they were jealous of, of uh, the narrator's relationship to Annabelle Lee. Uh, she's, it says, I was a child and she was a child in this kingdom by the sea, but we loved with a love that was more than love, I and my Annabelle Lee, with a love that the winged seraphs of heaven coveted her and me. And this was the reason that long ago in this kingdom by the sea, like then the narrator is saying that the angels were jealous of their love. And so they sent out a, uh, a wind, a cold chill wind, which might have given Annabelle Lee a certain sickness, and that resulted in her, in her death. It is not enough for this to just be natural causes. Some, somebody has to be to blame. Heaven, God, God has caused my Annabelle Lee to die. The narrator is shaking their fist in a very solemn way. Uh, and um, there's that supernatural element that's present in this poem. With with Poe being noted for for certain supernatural elements in his in his work, so it's not um, absent here as well. And then another interesting element of this poem that I think is really important worth talking about is the Annabelle Lee, the woman in the poem, the cent the cent uh, the centerpiece, the, the focus of it. Um, what's really interesting is how the narrator chooses to view Annabelle Lee. He says that a maiden lived there whom you may know by the name of Annabelle Lee, and this maiden she lived with no other thought than to love and be loved by me. Which is a very interesting way to talk about a woman. Like, she doesn't seem to exist outside of you. She's not autonomous. All that she's there for is for your love and to share love with you. Like, she doesn't have any other responsibilities in life. She's only there for, for love. Kind of a, I want to say a bit of a misogynistic kind of uh, view uh, of women. And, uh, like, you see that later in the poem, like, oh, our love was far stronger and everything, and uh, it was very powerful, and she was very beautiful. And that's something that shows up frequently in Edgar Allan Poe's works, because he, he views women as there only to be loved, um, very, very singular, everything is from the male perspective, they're very beautiful. And I think, as, I, I, as I've said a couple times before, the greatest thing, the, the, the most singular thing that a woman can be in Edgar Allan Poe's work is a dead woman. Like the best woman is one who cannot reject you and run away. It's best that you like loved at a very young age and then she disappeared, <laughs> which is, which makes a lot of sense because that happened to Poe. Like his his um, the people that he loved died at an early age, or they just straight up left him because he was too much of a um, of a spooky goth boy or something like that. Um, but yeah, it's it's a weird kind of perspective to have towards women. And it's, it's, it's also interesting because they, they, he says they were young. And so this might be the narrator at an older age reflecting on the fact that uh, the, the woman that he loved is, is gone. It's very well possible that if had they gotten older, she, like, she might have left him. Or they might not have had a, such a long relationship. But he's choosing to dwell on it and, and hype up this relationship and glorify or, or something like that. Like, like objectify this woman as, as the, the end all be all. And, you know, that, that's not really what love is. <laughs> like, that, like love is supposed to be a, a shared thing where you're two souls connecting. And here it's just one soul connecting with, with, a, with a kind of picturesque woman, like who doesn't have her own thoughts or feelings. And um, I think for that reason, like maybe, maybe the narrator and, and like maybe Poe doesn't quite understand um, how, uh, like, how women, how love is supposed to be. And this might just be me saying that about Poe, but given that he says it in enough of his works and whatnot, I have to attribute this as a quality of Poe rather than a, um, a sort of, sort of theme that he's writing. Cause it seems like this is 
who he was and how he viewed the world. Anyway, those are my thoughts on Annabelle Lee by Edgar Allan Poe. You know, despite my, my, my initial criticism there of, of Poe, you know, I do like this poem. I do recommend that you go out and read it. Poe is a great writer. He just has some weird hangups that, uh, you know, I, I, I wish there was like a therapy and, and whatnot during his time so that he could have ha addressed that kind of thing and, and worked out whatever unresolved issues he had going on. Uh, he's a he's a really solid writer though, and um, like it, it, the things that he's writing about, like survived for a reason, including this poem. So I I'm gonna put a link to it in the description. I recommend that you go seek it out. You know, comment below if you have any thoughts on it. I'd love to hear what you have to th uh, say about Annabelle Lee. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so that more people can find out about this poem or this poet. You know, if they don't already know about either of these things. And until then, I wish you the best of luck in your uh, weird and um, estranged, fra like forever ago loved travels. Farewell.